Okay, let's get started. If you're someone like me, you do not have perfect skin, you have dark spots, blemishes, but you wanna try this Mary Phillips underpainting technique, I'm gonna show you how to do it, but still cover your blemishes and get the same results. The Mary Phillips slash underpainting technique requires you to go in with contour first to kinda of get that bone structure, then conceal, then blush, and then a little bit of foundation. But if you have textured skin like I do, you have a little bit of dark spots, blemishes, you want to do a prime step first. What's a prime step? Going on with a little bit of concealer to kind of get your complexion to start off as a blank canvas. I'm using one that's a little bit warmer than my actual complexion so it can kind of color correct and conceal any blemishes that would show through if I went in with that contour first. Literally mapping this out everywhere that I need it to be and then I'm gonna start that Mary Phillips technique. So this is something that I also do on set when I'm working with someone that doesn't have the most perfect skin. I like to start off with what I call a blank canvas where I go in and really focus on spot treating any areas of concern, like whether it be acne, dark spots, hyperpigmentation. And then once that's done, you have what's called a blank canvas and you can start doing the look as desired. So all of my dark spots are covered with a little bit of that warmer concealer. This is the Milk Future Fluid Concealer. Then I'm just gonna lightly blend that out. So going over in tapping motions just to blend that down so you can see that it's gonna create that blank look. Notice that I'm tapping and not just like smearing it all over the place. You wanna really focus on getting that coverage in that area where it's needed. Okay, so that's step one, if you have textured skin, you have that blank canvas now, you can go in with the Mary Phillips underpainting technique. So step one of this technique is to go ahead and add a little bit of contour. This is one of the Makeup by Mario sticks, going in at the jawline, the nose, and of course the forehead. And I always see the jawline. This is the cheek, the jawline, the nose, and then the forehead. That's looking a little wild, but we're gonna trust the process. Blend that out. That's how I blend out <laughs> the little bronzer around my baby hairs. I just go on my finger and lightly tap it in. Okay, I see the bones popping out. It's giving structure. She basically says that she likes to go in with the contour first to let the bones of the face pop out, meaning so you can see the actual bone structure. And then she goes in and does everything else. I think this technique is also really nice for anyone that has like issues getting their makeup to blend properly because you go in as a last step with that foundation over everything. So maybe if you usually go in heavy handed with the blush or contour, it's just gonna help diffuse all of that together versus, you know, putting those products over your foundation and then maybe you have a little bit too much of it on and you're trying to fight to blend it out. Okay, so the next step in this routine is under eye concealer. I'm using the Dior Flash Concealer just to like brighten up under eye and conceal any darkness. I am still using my same technique as before. Now, to blend out that under eye concealer. Going in with a fluffy brush to just blend out all of that concealer. I always like to bring my brightening concealer to the corner of my eye for like a natural look. It just kind of widens the eye a little bit. Do this part in here. A light little spotlight on the forehead that kind of gives the face some more shape. I normally don't conceal in my nose, but because that's one thing that I see a lot of people doing for this trend, I'm just going to do the same thing so you can see what it looks like. And then for this jawline, I'm just going to tap it with a bigger brush. Okay, it looks crazy now, but I think once I go in with that last step of the foundation on top, it's going to look good. We're going to trust the process. It looks crazy now, but... I'm gonna trust it. Okay, so I feel like I went a little bit too low on my concealer, so I did go back and add a little bit 
more of this contour stick. And this is the shade Dark, which is warmer and not so much of a contour. It's like more of a bronzer. So I'm taking that bronzer and going up a little bit towards the under eye area just to fix where I went a little bit too low with that concealer. But you can already see that the complexion is looking really yummy. Okay, so now the next step is to go in with blush. For that, I'm going to use this one from Fenty. I'm just going to put it on my finger and tap it in. I'm putting on more blush than usual because I know I'm going to put a little bit of foundation over it and I don't want to have to put blush on top of that foundation. Okay, so from there I'm going to take the brush that I used before for my concealer and just kind of diffuse that cream blush. Now we're ready to lightly go in with a little bit of foundation. All of the prime steps are on. We have that contour, that concealer, that blush, and now we're going to go in with a little bit of foundation. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the Luminous Silk Foundation with a loose brush. So something more like this versus like a full powder brush. I'm just going to put a little bit on the brush, like one dot, not a full pump because we already have a lot of coverage going on. I'm actually going to work that foundation into the brush on the back of my hand and then I'm going to go in and start diffusing everything together. Ooh, I'm not gonna lie, this is looking kind of amazing. So basically this last step just kind of melts all of your products together. Like I'm gonna do one side and you can see what it looked like before I melted everything in with that foundation. I'm not gonna go under eye because I don't wanna change the color of my under eye concealer, but I'm gonna go in with a little powder brush. No powder on it, just like a loose fluffy brush to kind of blend that under eye concealer. So what do you think about like the before, the after blending with the foundation? I think it looks so good. Okay, I'm going to powder and come right back. Okay, so this is my final look after powdering. I am going to add a little bit of setting spray. This is my favorite setting spray if you want that glowy kind of, you know, natural soft finish. The Charlotte Tilbury airbrush. It just looks so good and like brings that life back to the skin. Like you see that instant like luminosity come back but still matte where I needed to be. She did good on that one. Let me know what you think of the look. This is the final look. I love it a lot. I think it's giving like a natural you know barely there kind of vibe. So as a pro makeup artist when you go in and apply like your blush, your contour, your bronzer, we already know in our minds that we need to blend out each of those steps. So if you're new to makeup Doing that underpainting and then going over it with a little bit of foundation is a way to finish the look and make sure everything's blended out properly. And if you're new to makeup, I have an entire playlist dedicated to beginner-friendly makeup tutorials, so make sure you check that out. <laughs> but other than that, I hope this was helpful. Subscribe, share with a friend, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>